Our next speaker, Amr Bader from Egypt, who's the managing director of Egypt and the Middle East, Abercrombie and Kent in Cairo, has become in a, in, in a very short time uh, a personal friend, and I want to tell that story just a little bit. Uh, I first met Amr via a global conference telephone call. Um, Amr was in Egypt, Ann Shadi was in Des Moines, Iowa, Ambassador Mark Johnson, who was our vice chair, and the man who had given us Amr's name was in Montana, and I'm in a car on a fundraising trip driving across Alligator Alley, Florida, and I was captivated by his personal characterization, which I'm not going to share because I, I hope he will share his self-description because it's a marvelous entree to what we're about. Where he touched my heart and became even closer as a friend, I screwed up earlier this evening. I mispronounced the first name of the Israeli ambassador. And he very quietly told me, it is Uri, David, not Uri. And I plead, I probably worked with too many Russians and not, and not enough Israelis in, in my history. So Amr, thank you for that. And thank you for being on the advisory council of the board. have one more problem with Israel, how to pronounce Uri or Uri. So, so I hope they'll forgive me for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am blessed to be here. Uh, as I said earlier to my fellow colleague at the board, uh, I carry the bus title, I am Muslim, and my name is Amr Bader. And we say in the Arab world and the Muslim world, salam alaikum, which, which means may peace be on you. I would like to speak about three things. First, uh, our perspective of public diplomacy from where I come from. As an Egyptian, I'm again privileged of being an Arab, African, Muslim, so we represent really a large number of countries around the world. Uh, the 28 countries of the Middle East and the 40 countries in Africa. And we have a tip in both Asia with the Sinai Peninsula and Africa. So we have a perspective of public diplomacy and that we see that today we face many issues. The least is you know, the regional threats that we have, the regional instability, the complicated nature of globalized society, the anti-Americanism, and the global distrust. And we see that public diplomacy and all of this can truly, truly help. Public diplomacy, in my opinion, has become a resource no industry or government can afford to overlook. It has the power to promote collaboration, not competition. And for those of us here in this room who come from the philanthropy, the NGO, the nonprofit world, this is very important to remember that there's a lot here of collaboration and not competition. It encourages people to share resources and not compete for resources. It teaches us to cultivate leadership in others rather than hoarding talents to ourselves. Today, we can focus not only on the why, but how, how we can make public diplomacy work. In my opinion, there are three angles how we can make it work. One is when we talk about our diplomatic approach to freedom, democracy, and human rights, I like to believe that people of the world share common values, regardless of political or regional affiliation. We strive towards a common ends to that. Still, we have countless means of achieving these ends. The world has different ways of realizing democracy and human rights. One of the first thing that I can assure you brought everybody in the Middle East and in Africa and in Asia and everywhere I've been to, I'm in travel business, I travel all the time, is President Obama saying, no one size fits all. That has made a tremendous change to everything. So this is such a great beginning. Second, I would like to highlight the importance of vocational exchange to facilitate citizen diplomacy. We need, we need the expertise of this wonderful country. We need you to teach us how to administrate our municipality, how to make business run better, how to do so many things better. And I know there are those that might think this is, you know, not for real, because we're struggling ourselves. But yes, you're struggling, but that's a crisis. 
But America has so many great things to offer and give and teach the world. And you can do magic with this. And we can do magic to each other with this vocational exchange and use it as a tool to public diplomacy. Finally, I would like to stress on the importance of art and culture. This can help renew America's image abroad. We've seen the power of this, uh, the power of the American culture, pop, art, all types. That has a tremendous power to bring to everywhere around the world, and we must use this. And we, too, can change lives and can make difference with our arts and culture. So I would like to see that art and culture is on every agenda for public diplomacy going forward. I'm, again, privileged and delighted to be here. Last year, when I was asked to come to the first board meeting, uh, I was reluctant because the climate was different and I really didn't buy into it. I just didn't feel there was much for me to come. I accepted with pleasure to be part of it. But this year, as soon as I got the invitation to come, I said, you know, I have to be here because I feel welcome again and I feel I'm looking forward to working with you in this such an important issue under this beautiful, beautiful climate you have. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen.